Quincy Jones discovered me. And it's so interesting to me because when I was uh, working as a television newswoman in Baltimore, and really all I wanted to do was be an actress, but I was doing television and I felt at the time, I can't quit this job because this is what everybody else wants to do. And if I quit this job, what am I going to do? And I was going to a speech coach at the time that the station had sent me to. They, you know, they ever, the broadcasting school, they sent everybody to the same woman. And I was telling her, you know, I really don't want to do this. What I really want to do is act. And she says, my dear, you don't want to act because if you wanted to act, you'd be doing it. What you want to be, my dear, is a star. Because um, if you wanted to act, you'd be waiting tables in New York. You'd be, and I thought, now why am I gonna wait tables if I'm already working in TV? So I said, well, what I think is going to happen is I will be discovered because I want it so badly, somebody's gonna to have to discover me. And she said, you just dream. You dream, you're a dreamer. So when it happened, I called her up. I said, you will not believe this. I got discovered. And it really was a discovery. It's like one of those Lana Turner stories, only it wasn't a drugstore. He was uh, in his hotel room, saw me on TV. It was unbelievable. So the interesting thing about that is that I truly believe that thoughts are the greatest vehicle to change power and success in the world. Everything begins with thoughts. I mean, the chairs that we're sitting in, the room that we're in, all started because somebody thought it. So I thought up the color purple for myself. I know this is gonna sound strange to you. I read the book. I, pa I got so many copies of that book. I passed the book around to everybody I knew. If I was on the bus, I'd pass it out to people. And when I heard that there was gonna be a movie, I started, I started talking it up for myself. I didn't know Quincy Jones or Steven Spielberg or how on earth I would get in this movie. I'd never acted in my life, but I, I felt it so intensely that I had to be a part of that movie. I just, I really do believe I created it for myself. I wanted it more than anything in the world and would have done anything to do it. The biggest message I want to get across when it comes to the law of attraction is that it requires effort. It requires some type of action. That's why in the word attraction, you see action in the word. You don't just get to write down something on a piece of paper or have a vision board or you know, map something out or cut out photos and, and look at it in front of you every single day or write down things on a piece of paper and think hard about it for a few minutes and then expect everything in your life to change and to be this magnet of opportunities. Have everyone that you want in your life attracted to you, money, good health, opportunities with your career. It's not gonna happen overnight like that. And I wish it did, but it's not that easy. So there are some beliefs and actions that we need to take place in order for it to work and that's what we're going to do by diving into today. So the first thing you want to think about is switching from negativity to positivity. So many people get caught up in focusing on what they don't want to happen in their future. And I want to talk about this a little bit towards the end of this video on how to focus on some of the negative things that could happen but really focusing on the positive for the main part of your life. We'll talk about that towards the end because this is an important distinction but they start living almost in constant fear of what could go wrong and what won't work out. And when we come from this place of, well, I don't know if I put myself out there, you know, it's not gonna work out and then I'm gonna get made fun of and then people, I'm gonna be embarrassed and then I'm gonna be stressed and no one's gonna love me. And then we go in this rabbit hole and this kind of cycle of fear and anxiety and that is not how you attract good things in your life. You can't start from your way of being of negativity and fear and expect to attract beautiful things in your life. So we, we need to eliminate the negative self-talk and an environment that's easy to get stuck in sometimes can be the negative self-talk. And there's so much negativity in the world and if you don't actively work to shift your focus, to shift your thoughts and your mind, that negativity will consume you. And that's where the law of attraction comes in. Now for me, it's about focusing less on what I don't want to happen in the future and actually focus on what I do want. And again, I think a lot of people focus on what they don't want too much. And you start to attract the things you're thinking about. I don't want this, I don't want that. Those things start to come to you. You start to see them. It's like the old example of someone says, you know, don't think of a pink elephant. You start to see it and you start to imagine it. And you say, well, I don't want to be poor. You start to feel it and you start to imagine it 
and you start to have anxiety around it. So you wanna really think about the positive things in your life. You wanna think about what do I wanna attract? Who do I wanna become? What do I wanna overcome? So for example, if you're becoming a negative person, you're more likely to attract more negative people rather than positive ones because positive people won't wanna be around you. You know, negativity keeps company and so does positivity. When you start to see other positive people that are like you, you say, I wanna hang out with those people. Those people are gonna to continue to lift me up. I can lift them up. It's a good cycle. But the negative stuff you start to attract, when you talk about gossip and you talk about bad news and you talk about comparison and judgment and anxiety and stress, that feeds in a community of other people that speak in the same language. So you wanna shift your language and start thinking more positively. And if you feel like you aren't deserving of a loving, relationship, a loving partner, you're most likely going to attract the wrong type of people in your life. And if you're focusing on how much money you don't have in your life right now, or how your business could fail, you're not going to be able to focus your energy on the right clients or the products that will take your business to the next level or the skills you need to develop to help you grow. Now your thoughts dictate your actions and where your energy goes. So you want to be thinking about what can I do to replace these negative thoughts, the anxiousness or the fear? How can I replace it so my energy can go in a more positive direction? And again, where you put your energy into is what you attract. So if you're thinking negative thoughts all day long, you're probably gonna attract that. If you're thinking gratitude and positive thoughts, you'll start to see that show up differently. So how can we put the law of attraction into practice? Now let's go back to our examples and apply a new way of thinking. If you're caught in thinking negatively about the world and about yourself, this is so important. What would change inside of you if you looked around and you wrote down five things that you're grateful for about the world? Now, this for me is part of the secret to the law of attraction. It's the foundation is gratitude. It's your way of being must be grateful in order to attract new things. There's so many things in my life that I should not have attracted because I didn't have the skills, because I didn't have the tools, because I didn't have the education, because I didn't have the money, because I didn't have the resources. So many things that I shouldn't have attracted, but because I had the foundation of gratitude, passion, joy, curiosity, those things started to come to me and they can come to you as well if you come from that place of gratitude as your foundation. So you wanna think about what are these things that are important to me in my life? You know, it can be simple things. It could be like this cup of coffee that I have right now. It can be that I have a roof over my head, that I've got quality friends, that I'm healthy, you know, that I'm walking in nature today. It doesn't have to be some grandiose thing that's happened to you to be grateful for. I'm so grateful for these little present moments with people that I care about, to spend an hour on the beach, to go for a walk with a friend, to have a good conversation with someone and talk about something that I'm going through. For me, that's just as meaningful. The moments in between the big moments are just as meaningful. So write down these things or think about these things. This is something I embed in my daily life when I wake up, I think about what I'm grateful for. When I go to sleep, I, I think about and reflect on the things I'm grateful for from that day. And it's just my way of being for as much as I can. Now, I'm not perfect, I make mistakes, and there's some times I'm negative, but it's something that I try to really focus on as much as possible. So instead of saying that you're not enough, that you don't deserve success, what if you looked in the mirror on a daily basis? I dare you to look in the mirror on a daily basis and say, I am enough, and I do deserve the results that I wanna create in my life because I show up, because I'm consistent, because I work hard, because I care about my work, if you looked in the mirror and you did this consistently for 30 days and you actually use the word action in attraction and you put it into practice on a daily basis towards that growth, I'd be amazed to see what you attract and what you manifest in your life. Or if you felt like you weren't deserving of a loving partner and just kept focusing on the wrong people, what if you said, you know what? I am deserving of a loving partner because I care deeply about those around me and I'm worthy of feeling deeply cared about myself. And what if you started to change your thoughts and behaviors around yourself and say, I'm not gonna keep doing the things that I've always done. I'm gonna start showing up differently and love myself, not needing someone else to love me who maybe isn't in the right mindset. And start distancing yourself from those typical patterns that you've had in the past 
and love yourself first and see what you attract from that loving, grateful place with yourself. Or if you are in a tough financial spot, maybe you're struggling financially and you've been trying to start a business or a side hustle. I've been there, I know what this feels like, it's not fun. For a long time, I was living on my sister's couch and I didn't have much money. It was really stressful. I remember this feeling of being stuck, feeling like I was never going to make any money. And when I was focusing on that feeling of, I'm never gonna make this money, I feel stuck, I feel trapped, when's this gonna happen, feeling this anxiousness, this stress around it, it was really impossible for me to think of creative ideas. It was impossible for me to take action because I was living in the stress as opposed to the gratitude for what I was having in that moment. I should have been focusing on, you know what, my sister is allowing me to stay here for free so I have some time to learn a new skill. I made $100 this day. I should be grateful for that. Not a focusing on what I'm lacking or what I don't have, but what I am creating on a daily basis. And I started to ask different questions around this time, like how can I be of service to other people? How can I add as much value to someone else? Or what are my top skill sets that I can use to my advantage that no one else has? Like what do I have? I started writing a list of all these different skills that I had. Even when I didn't think I had many skills, I still wrote down a list of the qualities I have, of the skills from the past that maybe I could apply to right now. And when I began asking those types of questions, I started attracting the people who needed my skill sets and services. And I finally started to make more money than ever before because I was thinking about serving others. I was thinking from a positive, grateful standpoint about helping others and starting a side hustle which turned into a business Instead of thinking negatively about not having any money or I'm sleeping on my sister's couch and why is it taking me so long to create this and I'll never make anything from this situation, I started focusing on how can I add value, as much value as possible to this one person in front of me right now. How can I serve them? How can I create for them? How can I connect someone to them that could help them? What can I do to add value and help someone else achieve their goals? Because I think as Zig Ziglar said, if you want to accomplish all of your goals, help other people accomplish their goals. And that's what I started focusing on. Not what I'm lacking, but how can I give and how can I add value to other people. When you focus outward on service, you start to really attract some incredible things in your life. It's unbelievable, the ripple effect, the domino effect, one person helping another person, how it comes back around to you. If the sun is energy and you sit outside and uh, you know, you're know you enjoying the sun, and it's nice and warm. Um, if you sit long enough, the concentration of energy on your face may cause a little bit of a tan, right? So it's gonna cause your skin to get tanned, agreed? So the energy is having an effect. The energy that's 93 million miles away, that's taking 8.8 .8 minutes to reach my face from the sun can affect my skin, right? Now, what if, what if I took that sun and in between the sun and my face, okay, if I took that light and focused it through the lens, concentrated it to my face, could I burn a hole in my skin? Or if I took one of my goal cards, right? This is my goal cards, right? If I took the sun, right, and I used it to magnify, to increase the amplitude of the vibration, of the energy called the sun through the magnifying glass, you know, onto the paper, right? Could I burn a hole in the paper by focusing that energy? General sun, right, is general heat. But with a little bit of focus and concentration, right, I can increase the amplitude of the vibration of the sun. Now, stay with me, watch this. What if I took the same sun and instead of just focusing the sun a little bit, okay a little bit you know between the sun and the paper what if i reduce the energy or increase the amplitude of vibration so i can actually get a laser single photon same sun but focused even more highly okay could i use the energy of the sun to create a laser to burn through a piece of steel yes or yes it's not a no yes or no question it's a yes or yes answer. Okay, why is this important? Okay, it's important because the more you learn to concentrate, okay, the more you learn to concentrate 
your brain, the electromagnetic switching station that can be fragmented or focused on your vision, health goals, wealth goals, relationship goals, career goals. The more you can stop being distracted, the more you can concentrate, okay? The most powerful electromagnetic switching station called your brain, right? You activate that left prefrontal cortex. You activate the emotional parts of your brain. You activate the instinctual parts of your brain. The more you learn how to focus on your precise vision and goals and how you're going to achieve it. And then you take inspired action daily. The more you are concentrating this molecular structure called a human being to move towards the goal, but the more you are in resonance with exactly what you want to achieve. So is it possible that by learning how to do that, you can achieve your goals faster and easier than ever before? And the answer is absolutely. But you know what everybody thinks? Oh, I'm just going to like hope and pray and my goals are going to become a reality. That is just bullshit. So stop fooling yourself, okay? I hope you don't mind a little bit of animation. So in the world that we live in, this is one of the other great laws, the law of cause and effect, okay? The law of cause and effect. For every effect, there's a cause. For every cause, there's an effect. So. If you are thinking positively, but feeling negatively, that is a self-fulfilling doom loop. Cause, effect, cause, effect. You have to do, okay, I'm gonna type in something right now. S-E-M-P, all right? S-E-M-P, I just typed the word for you. S is you've gotta get the spiritual energy, the emotional energy, the mental energy, and the physical energy in alignment. If any one of those four things is out of alignment, that would be like having your uh, dial on the radio station for classical music or jazz or rock and roll or love songs just a little bit off the station. Our universe operates by law and precision. At the physical level, physical laws. At the quantum level, quantum laws. And yes, there's randomness in the quantum field, but it operates at lightning speeds perfectly every time, no exceptions. The Newtonian world is all about the predictable. It's all about predicting a future. But the quantum model of reality is, is about causing an effect. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins and when you love yourself and you love all of life you'll create an equal and now you're causing an effect and i think that's the the difference between living as a victim in your world saying i am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience they made me think and feel this way when you switch that around you become a creator of your world and you start saying my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life and now that's a whole different game and we start believing more that we're creators of reality. How do we then go from that, like mechanistically, mm -hmm. to begin this visualization process of something that's empowering, <clears throat> it's me in a different state, it's my future self, is it meditation, is sure. it, what does that look like? If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. And if you wake up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, as you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing at the exact same time, it's no longer that your personality is creating your personal reality. Now your personal reality is affecting or creating your personality. Your environment is really controlling how you think and feel unconsciously. Because every person, every thing, every place, every experience has a neurological network in your brain. Every experience that you have with every person produces an emotion. So some people will use their boss to reaffirm their addiction to judgment. They'll use their enemy to reaffirm their addiction to hatred. They'll use their friends to reaffirm their addiction to suffering. So now they need the outer world to feel something. So to change then is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the conditions in your world. And the environment is that seductive. So then why is meditation the tool? Well. Let's sit down, let's close our eyes. Let's disconnect from your outer environment. So if you're seeing less things, there's less stimulation going to your brain. 
if you're playing soft music or you have earplugs in, less sensory information coming to your brain, so you're disconnecting from your environment. If you can sit your body down and tell it to stay like an animal, stay right here, I'm gonna feed you when we're done. You can get up and check your emails, you can do all your texts, but right now, you're gonna sit there and obey me. So then, when you do that properly, and the, you're not eating anything, or smelling anything, or tasting anything, you're not up experiencing and feeling anything, you would have to agree with me that you're being defined by a thought, right? So when the body wants to go back to its emotional past, and you become aware that your attention is on that emotion, and where you place your attention is where you place your energy, you're siphoning your energy out of the present moment into the past, and you become aware of that, and you settle your body back down in the present moment, because it's saying, well, it's eight o'clock, you normally get upset because you're in traffic around this time, and here you are sitting, and we're used to feeling anger, and you're off schedule. Oh, it's 11 o'clock, and you usually check your emails and judge everybody. Well, the body's looking for that, that predictable chemical state. Every time you become aware that you're doing that and your body is craving those emotions and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just gonna say, I'm gonna sit. And the moment that happens, when the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. We go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And we've seen this thousands of times. In fact, we can actually predict it now on a brain scan. When we stop expecting things to be the way that we think they should be, when we stop forcing outcomes, and when we start allowing what is of the highest good to be our only agenda, our only intention, that's when the universe truly has our back. That's when we can live what it means to surrender. True surrender comes when we stop praying for what we think we need and we start connecting and grounding in what could possibly be of the highest good for all. When we stop praying for what we think we need and we start allowing what is of the highest good for all. So true manifesting is about receiving what is of the highest good for all. And it begins not just with what will, how will I get what is of the highest good, but how can I be open to what is of the highest good? How can I open up my consciousness to release what I think I need and get grounded in what is possible and what is of the highest good, not just for me and my agenda, but the highest good for all. That's the message. So you're doing everything right in that you're open to a spiritual practice, you're willing to grow, you're showing up for your practice, you're reading books, you're doing the work, you're here on Dear Gabby, you're showing up, you're showing up, you're showing up. You're doing a lot of doing though, and you're also doing a lot of expecting. And so a lot of doing and a lot of expecting are two major blocks to your ability to attract what it is that you want into your life. And so it's the doing, doing, doing that actually creates sort of a manic manifesting vibration, which is how do I get that? How do, what am I, what do I do next? Got to do this thing next, got to do this thing next. And that lacks the belief system that I can be still and I can allow. That's number one. Number two, being in the expectation of what you think things should be is another block to your manifesting power and your super attractor power, which is what I call it, because your expectations are limiting the possibilities your expectations are limiting the highest good, as this card says. So when we start to pray for what is of the highest good, rather than intend and pray for what we think we need, that's when the universe can conspire with what it is that is of the highest good for all. So ultimately what's happening is all the doing, doing, doing is energetically blocking, and all the expecting, expecting, expecting is blocking the manifestation as well, because when you're in this tunnel vision of expectation. It should be this way. I should be further along. I shouldn't be here. What's happening is you're missing the opportunity to recognize where you are, how great things are in this moment, what is possible in this moment, the creative possibility in this moment, the exciting potential in this moment. You're blocking it, blocking it, blocking it, blocking it, blocking it, blocking it. I want you to sit on your ass. I want you to stop doing, doing, doing. 
I want you to start being, 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 which is what you also said. You're actually dear Gabbying yourself. You said, I want to embody the feeling. I want to embody the emotion. The being is a presence. It's an energy. It's a state. It's not an action. True manifesting does require us to show up for our desires. You know, you got to pick up the phone and then call the job interview and you have to ask for the date and you have to, to do whatever it is that you want to create. But ultimately, the greatest source of power that we have to attract what we want is how we feel. There is a reason many of the great women and men of the world, the great history makers, the great poets, the great philosophers, the great movement makers rose before the sun. There is a magic in the air at 5 a.m. And that's why the 5 a.m. club is so transformational because it's the time of greatest quietude. And I believe tranquility is the new luxury on our planet. It is the a time of intimate creativity because you've just been rested. Your brain is fresh. There's, there's latest uh, there's there's very recent cutting edge science coming out now when you sleep your brain actually has a mechanism to wash itself when you wake up in the morning your willpower is strongest when you wake up in the morning you've got a full well of mental focus and we know that focus in our world is even more valuable than intelligence and i could go on and on on the benefits i mean you get up at 5 a.m you've got the world to yourself there's no crowds you can think you can plan you can care for yourself in a world where so many people are so depleted. And so the five, it, the 5 a.m. club really is a game changer. And then it's not just get up at 5 a.m. and, you know, scratch your stomach or stare up at the ceiling. It, or look at the, your phone. Or look at, especially <laughs> not, I believe you can play with your phone or change the world. You don't get to do both. Yeah. And so uh, it, the 5 a.m. club method is based on the 2020 formula. I'm happy to get into it, but that is yeah, the revolution. Yeah, tell us what it is. That's the revolutionizer. And and it started from my experience with working with many billionaires. I, I, I've coached many of the most successful financiers and uh, titans of industry for for over two decades and one of the things I would run them through is the way you begin your day sets up the way you live your day and so the 2020 20 formula that the book is based upon is pretty simple I, I go into great detail in the book but essentially it's from 5 to 520 the first pocket is move and I'm a fanatic about neuroscience and why do you get up and move? Because you're gonna release serotonin, which is gonna make you feel better. You're gonna release dopamine, which is the pleasure and inspirational neurotransmitter. You're gonna release norepinephrine, which will boost your focus. You'll promote neurogenesis. Marie, you can actually grow new brain cells. Oh, you're gonna increase yeah, you your metabolic rate. So the way, you begin, the way you feel when you first wake up is not the way you're gonna feel at 520. Second pocket of the 20-20-20 formula, 20 minutes from 5.20 to 5.40, that's on reflection. So a lot of us are busy, but what's the point of being busy if you're doing the wrong things? The, the billionaires, the great creatives, the people of great impact, the people who live beautiful lives are very intentional. They're very deliberate, they're very conscious. So for 20 minutes, you write in a journal, you can visualize, you can pray, you can meditate, you can simply contemplate how you're going to live your day, who, what you want to stand for during the day, for example. And then the final pocket of the 2020 formula is all about grow. And that's where you, you, you just read from a biography or a business book or a philosophy book. or a, And so that's 20 minutes of growing yeah. because I think we're most alive when we are growing. Yes. And um, I believe the leader who learns the most wins. Many of us have issues with productivity. Maybe we are overly productive, but we're feeling burnt out all the time, or we're not productive at all because we don't know where to start. I found personally being in business for myself for the last 20 years that I have been a little overly productive. I almost did too much and I was constantly multitasking and making things happen and just moving so fast that ultimately I really burnt out and I started feeling brain fog. I was feeling disoriented. I couldn't focus. I was feeling like even though I for so many years was priding myself on the fact that I could get so much done at one time, I actually don't think I was being nearly as productive as I could have been. So I hit a bottom recently with this productivity overload and I realized that I had to change my patterns, I had to change my ways. I was then blessed, um, I said a prayer, I said I need some help with my brain fog and I need some help with my productivity issue. And I, that day, got an email from the Dr. Oz show asking me to come on and do a segment with 
this lovely author and doctor, Dr. Mike Dow. And me and Mike had been in touch many years, um, for many years, just because he had been an author, we were published by the same publishers. And Mike had written a book about brain fog. So that day, I'm like, thank you universe, you're giving me exactly what I need. I go on Dr. Oz with Mike and I'm backstage with him and I'm like, listen, I'm feeling so chaotic and I'm multitasking so much and my, my, I feel like I've got brain fog and I'm, I'm forgetting things. And he looked at me and says, how much are you doing at one time? And I said, oh, Mike, I'm doing a million things at once. I have a thousand tabs up on my screen. And he's like, these are big brain no-nos. And they're also productivity no-nos is what he said. Because he said that the more I try to do and the more I try to multitask, the less I'm actually getting done. So he gave me a tip that I wanna share with you that has changed everything for me. And his suggestion was to just do five things a day. To make a list of the five most important things that I need to do that day and not do number two until I've completed number one. And then once I complete number one, move on to number two, then on to number three. And if I don't get through all five in one day, I'll just pick up the fifth the next day or wherever I left off, I'll pick up the next day. And to really stick to that list and not move back and forth and not try to make a million other things added onto that list and just be really committed to that five task list. I did it. I started to just be very clear about the five things I was doing in a day. I told my team, I made a, uh, a list in my base camp, which is where we keep all of our notes. And I made it really clear to myself, these are the only five things I'm doing throughout the day. As a result of making it super clear and conscious to myself that I was only gonna do five things, I have been more productive, I have created more, I have been more intuitive, I have been more inspired, and I've been more creative. I've been really working on getting honest and telling the truth and being forthcoming about how I'm feeling. I know this is something that can be very squirrely for people. We can get really hung up about actually saying how you feel and telling the truth. But when we don't tell the truth, we actually stifle our energy, we create toxic relationships, we carry resentments, and it builds up and builds up and builds up. So I've gotten into the practice of just, just radically telling the truth wherever I am, however I need to be authentic and truthful about what I'm feeling. But I have a few steps that I think are important that you need to take in before you actually give that truth over. Because if you share your truth without cleaning up your side of the street, it'll feel like an attack, it'll feel like judgment. So the process of telling the truth is quite simple. First, take a look at your side of the street. Look at what's up for you. If you feel called to get honest with somebody, what is it within you that's feeling triggered? What is it that's, that's feeling activated? And do whatever you need to do to clear that, whether it be forgiving yourself, forgiving the other person, saying prayers for that other person, sending loving energy to that other person, and clean up the energy before you bring over the truth because you don't want to show up with this nasty attitude because your truth won't be heard. You need to bring your truth with a lot of light so that they can see their light reflected back to them. So the process is really simple. Look at your side of the street before you show up and tell the truth and then be prepared to get honest from a place of love. If you can tell the truth from a place of love, then you will be heard. And that's when you feel healed and that's when a healing can be offered up to the relationship. But as long as you're telling the truth from a place of negativity or judgment, it will not be heard and it won't work. I learned this the hard way, unfortunately, but the experience has given me this great opportunity to learn how to tell the truth with grace and power. The benefit of telling the truth is that you start to feel like you're taking care of yourself. You start to feel like you're owning your voice, you're owning your needs, you're protecting yourself when you need to protect yourself, and you're sticking up for what your values are, no matter what. And you're also just you know, really getting clear about what your boundaries may be within certain relationships. And so sometimes people may not like your truth, but you could always trust that if you're sharing your truth from a place of love, you will be heard. Even if they get defensive, even if they get upset, that your loving presence is enough to allow that truth to come through in a very authentic way. The other part that may be very helpful is once you've told your truth, give the person their opportunity to tell their own. Hold that space for them to say how they feel. There's always two sides to every story. So speak up and then allow the other person to speak up, clearing that space for the truth to unfold and trusting that the truth will totally set you free. My mom always always said this to me for my entire life, the truth will set you free, the truth will set you free. And I believe that we all want freedom. We want freedom from resentment, freedom from anxiety, freedom from fear. And that freedom is available as we start to open up to the truth within us. 
I once heard a definition of health that made a lot of sense to me. Good health, it said, is having no fatigue, having a good appetite, going to sleep and awakening easily, having a good memory, having good humor, and having precision in thought and action, not being klutzy, being honest, humble, grateful, and loving. How healthy are you? I do not heal anyone. The work I do is to help people understand how their own mental patterns are constantly creating their own life experiences, all of them, the good experiences and the so-called bad experiences, and also how these same mental patterns are contributing to the ease and dis-ease in their bodies. We do not want to be ill, and yet we need every disease we have. It is the body's way of telling us that we have a false idea in consciousness. Our body is telling us we are on the wrong track and need to change the way we think. Every illness is a lesson for us to learn. Please do not just complain, I want to get rid of this condition. It will not create the healing you want, nor will you learn the lesson you need to learn. This is not a time for condemnation or for creating more guilt. We are just looking at what needs to be released. This is a time for healing, for making our lives and our bodies whole. I know you have within you all that you need to accomplish this. Once we begin to understand this process, we are able to take conscious control of the changes we wish to make in our life. This is a very exciting process and becomes one of the most important adventures in our life. I believe there is a center of wisdom within each one of us, and when we are ready to make positive changes in our lives, we attract whatever we need to help us. Something inside of you has shifted, and the healing process has already begun. You might even say that to yourself now. I have already begun the healing process. The body, like everything else in life, is a mirror of our inner thoughts and beliefs. The body is always talking to us if we will only take the time to listen. Every cell responds to every single thought you think and every word you speak. Continuous modes of thinking and speaking produce body behaviors and postures and eases or diseases. The person who has a permanently scowling face did not produce that by having joyous, loving thoughts. Older people's faces and bodies show so clearly a lifetime of inner dialogue. How will you look when you are elderly? You see, it is my belief that it is our birthright to be totally healthy and totally fulfilled in every area of our lives. Take a nice deep breath and if possible, allow yourself to be in a comfortable position. Just let these ideas wash over you. Only those ideas that are right for you will be accepted by you. It doesn't matter whether you understand them all or not or if they make sense to you right now. Your subconscious mind will hear and record whatever you need. I believe that all illness is self-created. Not that we say, I want to have this illness, but we create a mental atmosphere where this dis-ease can grow and flourish. Our internal mental dialogue reacts in every cell in the body. 
I heard a physician say recently, if the surgeon operates on a patient without doing something to help them change the cause of the disease, then all the doctor is doing is prolonging the life of the patient until the patient can create another disease. You see, we need to do more than just treat the symptom. We need to eliminate the cause of the disease. And for that, we need to go within ourselves where the process of illness began. It is my belief that we are each responsible for every experience in our lives, the best and the worst. We all create our experiences by the thoughts we think and the words we speak. The universe totally supports our internal dialogue. Our subconscious mind accepts as truth whatever we choose to believe. You can say it either way. They both mean that what I believe about myself and about life becomes true for me. What you choose to think about yourself and about life becomes true for you.